15 foot Henry O and I need to build a couple of hatch covers that are missing here and here. So I'm just out here getting ready to measure. There's several ways you can do this. Um, most people build a mold and then build the, um, the fiberglass hatch upside down in the mold, if you will, and then pop it out of the mold. And I've done it that way before myself um, several times, a few times. But I think what I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna, I'm, I think I'm gonna try uh, to build a, a plug, which is like, instead of building a mold to the outside shape, I'll build a plug to the inside shape, so to speak. And then whenever you build it, you, you lay your fiberglass over the plug and then pop the plug out of the inside of the hatch. So it's the same kind of concept, just kind of like in reverse. But I think that's what I'm gonna try on this. Um, see how it works out. I think they're both the same size, so I'm gonna make my um, my plug and and then just do you know one off twice. See if it works. Doing it this way, I will uh, apply my um, gel coat to the finished product from you know rather than putting the gel coat in first. So first of all, I'm gonna just take a a drop of three quarter plywood I've got here and run it through my table saw and get my dimensions. Uh, this is just a piece of uh, three quarter inch Baltic birch or Russian birch that I had laying around. It's like 13 ply, I believe it is. So it'll be lay, it'll lay pretty flat and, and stable whenever I work off of it. And then once I get it to cut to my dimensions, I'll to come back with the router and, uh, you know, put a rounded edge all the way around it. And then I'll also, you know, cut my radiuses in the corners and 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 uh, round those over as well to, to fit the shape and then that'll be my the start of my plug today i'm working on making a couple of hatches for that henry o 15 sailboat, I mean, fishing boat, sorry, fishing boat, and I'm going to try something here, it may may not work, but it might, I've just got a, a four bricks laying up here on my table just to get this up off the table a bit, and I've got some uh, mylar, a Melonex, I'm going to put uh, down there, and then I'm going to put my plug that I've got made, I've got the, you know, everything kind of halfway sanded and all that, and I'm going to put this mylar over the side that I'm going to be applying the fiberglass cloth and resin to. And I'm going to uh, use the Melonex or the mylar to keep it from sticking to the plug. Is my my thought process here? I've used mylar for similar things quite a few times with pretty good success, but not for this exact scenario. So we'll see how it works. Okay, I've got the plug board covered with mylar. I just taped the corners in with some uh, Scotch Magic tape, and I'm using. Uh, 1708 biaxial for my first layer, and I'm gonna put the, you know, the mat to the down, you know, toward the uh, plug. That'll give me a little bit of better surface to work with later and under there for sanding or whatever. Remember, I will be bl gluing in a and, a and glassing over a, a a backer on the back side to stiff stiffener. I'm gonna use a layer of this. And then I'm going to use a layer of basically the same thing except for without the mat. That'll be my middle, the middle layer, the inner layer. So that's biaxial, uh, 17 ounce biaxial without the without the uh, mat layer on the back. And then my top layer will be 1708, and I'll turn the mat up, and that'll give me a sanding surface. 
hope we won't tramp through. And that's all it will be, that, and then there'll be a re reinforcing, uh, um, stiffening, you know, block on the backside, which will probably be like 3 8 inch plywood, like a core. So I'm going to mix up some, uh, I'm using uh, West System Epoxy with Slow Hardener. It's about 90, middle 90s temperature today. But I've got the AC running in here, so it won't be quite so bad. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. I, I very well likely may not be able to get this to, to shape to my corners. I may have to take scissors or a razor knife and, and split it and fold it. Uh, that's kind of a, um, unfortunately, it's, this material is so thick, it, do, it doesn't conform to hard curves very good. But we're going to see what it'll do anyway. Because I'm putting it on top of that mylar, I did not uh, put any resin on the back side first, like I kind of normally do. Whenever I separate it from the plug and put the backer in, I'll be glassing the back side again. I'll just wet it out good so it can you know permeate all the way through it, hopefully. This fabric has been folded, which is not a good way to deal with it because it's hard to get the fold out. And yeah, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need a bit more resin to do the edges. So this just may be too thick to make my radiuses. I'm gonna have to scramble here just a little bit to come up with a solution for that.
if you overwork this matte layer, you'll start peeling it up. It'll start coming up in strands or in little balls. back to my corners and rework them a bit after it all sets up but I can do that most of it can be kind of reinforced and off from the inside got a little bit of room to maneuver on the inside with it just kind of a, a feeble attempt to improve my sides a little bit. They were not hanging down quite as plumb as I would have liked them to be. Mike can make them work, but I'm going to try, try to make them just a little bit better. And what I'm doing is just taking some scrap mylar and uh, putting some put something against it here just to help push it in a little bit. May work, may not. I don't know. We'll see. Well, let's see what I got here. This is, is not fully cured at all, but it is um, where I can touch it without being sticky. I let it cure overnight. But. Curious to see what I got. I just use those to help push my corners in just a little bit. Well, you know, knowing ahead of time, I was going to have to grind out my corners. But, uh, that's not going to be terrible, I don't think. I'm going to run it through my table saw and trim it before I even try to take out that uh, core. I think it, I think it may be okay. As long as I can get the core out, I think it'll be alright. I'll trim off some of this excess before it gets any harder. Okay, I ran it through the table saw. roughly and look at how easy that popped out there came right out and then you see how the uh, mylar peels out pretty easy I 
and that's pretty smooth here. Not that it matters, this has to be cored anyway. And this is not quite cured. It's still ever so soft. So other than having to you know build my corners, that turned out all right. Like so, I'll, you know, I'll patch up my corners from the inside and then you know fill it from the outside to get my radius that I need with some um, you know thickened epoxy, and from the outside to where I can sand it out to the roundness that I need. And uh, that's just uh, sawdust that blew up on it from the table saw there. And I'll probably have to take just a smidgen off of it depth wise. I think it's going to end up being like five eighths of an inch. The um, tape that I put in the corners is pulling out too, so that's good. Yeah, masking tape, magic tape. So that worked. I'm going to have to take it out to the boat, and put it in place, and see if my how far off my depth is. Like I said, it, it, best I can tell, it measured five eighths, and I cut it three quarters. That's that overall overall depth. And then tomorrow, once it's cured, I'll come back and sand it all out and rebuild the corners and all that. It was amazing how easy it popped off. I mean, it's just like I just, just lifted it up with my fingers and didn't have to prize on it at all. None, none at all.